Hey everyone, um, I was wondering like how to go about like for those of you that have sill nylon tents um, because a lot of products will damage them. So I was talking to the guys over at Tarp Tent. I wanted to know like how I could add like a waterproofing unit to it that wouldn't hurt it. And there's this product made by Atsco. It's a silicone water guard. And this is actually what a lot of the companies that make silicone sill nylon tents use. So this is a product that is actually safe to use on sill nylon tents and um, it's pretty simple. You know, you want to clean off the tent and spray it, but apparently it works great. And like I said, a lot of these professional companies use it. So if any of you have a worn down tent that you want to give a little bit of prep before you go, obviously the people that have, you know, Dyneema tents don't need this, but just an idea. And I'll have the links in the description. Uh, this. <laughs> it's just a little tiny thing. This is called liquid nails or liquid nail, <laughs> liquid skin, um, which is basically almost the same thing as like super glue, but it's great. I found that this is awesome in the field um, rather than trying band-aids. Now, obviously this is just something I've done because if you get a little cut or a scrape, you just put this in it and it seals it where, you know, especially in the desert where it's really hot, you can put a Band-Aid on it, it's gonna be gone and like, you know, from sweat in two seconds. This actually goes in and seals it. Now this is just for like smaller cuts. You know, if you have something deep, don't go doing this, but it weighs nothing. And this is just something I like to carry in my, uh, my fanny pack rather than a bunch of Band-Aids. I usually do carry one or two, but just an idea. The other hack I want to talk about, and this is just something that really affected me that I wasn't expecting, um, especially in the desert uh, regions. The water in my pack would get so hot that when I first came out of Warner Springs, I it made me vomit. Like I literally got sick because it was so hot out and then drinking like really warm, very, very hot water. I just hadn't even thought about it. And up until that point, it hadn't really been an issue. I don't know. And uh, so what I found was, and this is just something simple that I like to do. And uh, when I could go into a town, I would take a couple of my bottles and I would freeze them. And then before I'd head out, now this is just like regular bubble tape. Um, this would be enough to do two bottles. I weighed it, it didn't even come in at an ounce. So I would just wrap the bottle um, a little bit in this. And this actually acts as like a natural insulator. And then throughout the day during the hike, it would slowly melt. And then I would add my, um, my Propel. Don't add it first because it also often has a lot of sodium in it and it can make it really hard to freeze. <laughs> I found out, out the hard way. I had the bottles in the freezer like one stop and they didn't freeze. But anyway, so that's just one idea. If, if people, um, you know, and I know there's other things you can do, like when you get to a water source, put your bottles in the creek. But a lot of times it was like, you know, a big stretch between water sources. So that's just one idea. And then I, I know a lot of people eat tuna on trail and I do myself, but if you ever notice, like most of the packets, like a small packet like this has like maybe 80 or 90 calories, which really isn't that much. But I did find that like, if you buy it like this, now this is um, an Evo, uh, it's got olive oil in it, same size package, but this has 180 calories in it. Not only that, it has the olive oil, which is healthy fats. They can be a little bit more expensive, but you can find them on sale and just buy a bunch. So you're getting double the calories for the same little package. They also have them in like a sunflower oil if you want something like that. But the one with the olive oil um, has the most calories at 180 calories. So Rosa, because um, for this small size waist belt, the hip belt pockets are really small. I'm not really sure why it's designed like that because they do have room to be bigger. So what I did was I cut um, one of them off and I installed their aftermarket um, hip bell pocket, which is actually really nice. It's got a waterproof zipper. It's a lot bigger than the one that comes on the small. Now for the people that have medium, large or whatever, you don't need to do that because those are already big, but yeah, it just goes on with these straps. And then I attached it back here with this little uh, U-clamp, which is perfect because it holds it. So you, when you pull it, it's not going to come off and it holds it in place. But it's great because it's a lot bigger. This one actually will fit my phone and um, you know, it took me like 10 minutes. So just a thought if anyone else has the small waistband and doesn't like the smaller pockets, that thing costs about $14. And yeah, it is you know annoying to have to cut up your thing, but <laughs> I wanted to also go over a few um, things regarding hoodies. 
because they've become really popular in the last few years for both you know desert hiking and there's so many options out there that it can be a little uh, overwhelming just depending on what you're looking for obviously you know most people are going to want a, a, a lightweight option so there's a few that i found and actually this one is the one that um i actually just got when i was on the pct last year one of the guys that i met up with he had this hoodie and it was one night and he had a bunch of other things and I didn't have my puffy at the time and I was freezing and he, he just, hey Brian, you can use this tonight. And I remember thinking it was just so soft and, and just so warm. Now I was carrying a hoodie of my, my own by Vroomy, um, the men's river run hoodie, which I'm sure a lot of you know, it's an awesome hoodie. I, I love it. Um, so I'm not saying anything bad about it, but the one thing for me was at night when I would put it on, when I was looking for a little extra warmth, I, I really didn't feel it helped me. And again, this is just personally for me. I still love the hoodie and I'm still gonna carry it this year, but for part of it. But this one I got, and this is by a company called uh, Merino Ridge. They're a company in Colorado. And um, this one is 85% Merino and 15% nylon. And I personally like that combination better than a polyester uh, merino blend because nylon doesn't absorb your skin oils. Now it does absorb water more, so it will take a little longer to dry, but in my experience, nothing crazy. Um, but the reason polyester stuff tends to smell is because, and I forget the word, but it absorbs um, oils. So even when you wash it, it's hard to ever get all of that out. So over time, it just tends to smell. And again, I've got polyester mix stuff too. So this is just information. Um, there's been a lot of popular hoodies on the trail. I think since Darwin mentioned the one by Appalaka, uh, Appalachian uh, Alpaca hoodie material. I'm gonna have the links and some pictures here on the video, but uh, apparently it's an awesome hoodie. Um, they've been sold out. These are sold out. That's the one thing that I guess I found that's frustrating is a lot of these options from these smaller companies. And again, this is also some information that I found from researching that other people have found that's been very frustrating is that a lot of the options are impossible to get. They're, you know, sold out. Um, the Melanzana, which is, I guess this now, I don't, I've never seen one. I've never worn one, but I'm sure everyone is familiar with it. It's from this company, again, out in Colorado. And apparently they're so popular that they don't even sell them online anymore. And you have to drive all the way to the store. And even when you do, you have to pay, you can only buy two, I think there's a limit, or you can pay someone on eBay like three times the cost to get one, which, you know, who wants to do that? But I have found with most of these companies, um, now I don't know about the Melanzana, I think they're pretty strict, so you'd have to go there, but you know, if the product is sold out, you can send them an email, at, get at, get an estimate of, you know, when it's going to be in stock. Okay, so guys, wanted to give you a close-up. Um, on the left is the Ridge Merino. On the right is the Vroomy. And the main difference between these is going to be material. The Ridge Merino one is 87% Merino wool, and the Vroomy is 53%. Uh, and the Vroomy is also a 53% and polyester. And this is um, the main difference. This is the Vroomy one um, right here. I kind of flipped the material inside out so you could see the what it was because I actually was surprised that it was only 52% and 43% polyester. And the weirder thing is to me was that the polyester is the part that's up against your skin. And I got this from them. I actually asked the, the people at Vroomy, which they're great. People at Vroomy are great. I've loved this hoodie. It's been a great hoodie. Um, for me, it just didn't really give me any extra warmth at night, but it is a great, um, very, very lightweight. I think mine only weighs seven ounces for the large. And I wore it a bunch in the desert, but I like the Ridge Merino one a little better just because it's more Merino, it's softer, and just for me, it's a better fit. So yeah, um, they have a couple other options on their website. Um, there's a one that's a little bit thicker and warmer Then they have a sip hoodie, just a lot of great options. So definitely go and check their website out to get some more information. And like I said, this one is 87% Merino and 13% nylon and it weighs about eight ounces. The next one that I was talking about was the alpaca, the one that Darwin mentioned on his. Now I think for the large, it's about 12 ounces. I've never seen one, but according to him, um, it's awesome. And yeah, I believe them. I mean, it looks amazing. It looks really soft. It looks warm. 
I saw a bunch of other people comment on it that said it's a great hoodie. That's why I was looking into it, but it sold out and I emailed them, but I didn't get any information back. So, but it looks like a really warm hoodie. And then of course the Melanzana, which is I think more of just one of those fashion trend rave things because I mean, it looks like a great hoodie, but I also heard some reviews that people said it has this thing in the front, sort of this collar that can overheat you at times. But again, all personal preference and it looks like a great hoodie. So, but you have to go to, to Colorado to get one. And even then they have an in-store limit of two, which I guess I understand, but I guess it would be kind of frustrating if you went out there for a bunch of people to get one, you know, for a bunch of your friends. But in any event, that's all I have for you guys for today. I'd love to hear what clothing items you're bringing or if you have a hoodie that you like, um, definitely hit me up in the comments. Sorry this video ran long, but thanks again for watching. Hope to see you next time. Take care. And keeping up with the tagging thing, I'm going to tag Trail Pope, Ken and Thea's Outdoors again, and Luke Purcell, I think I'm saying his name right, for your gear hacks. What are some gear hacks that you guys do? And I will leave links to each one of these people's channels in the description. They've got great channels and they're going to be hiking this year too. Check them out.